community development worker. So let's start with what does a community development worker do for someone who doesn't uh, know? Okay, uh, a, a community development worker mm -hmm. uh, tries to stand in the gap or tries to bridge the gap between the local community members mm -hmm. and the local authorities. Like you stand in the gap to air out the community issues, like uh, give a holistic approach to the solutions that the community's members are facing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the main thing. You just stand in like in a gap between the uh, local community members and the local authorities. Okay. Yeah. So do you, uh, when, you st when you stand in the gap, do you mm -hmm. go and, uh, you know, air out the issues that the community are facing to the authorities and do you make sure that something is done about them or what exactly happens when you stand in the gap? Okay, when you stand in the gap, that means that first you have to work with the uh, community stakeholders that are there, either the leaders and then we have uh, the el the church uh, church members and then we have also the, the women uh, leaders who are in the community and then now we have the main subjects who are the community members and in every community there is always various challenges that they're always facing so you have to go and sit with the community members and you try to like uh, identify the various problems that they are facing together and then you create a platform as a community development you try to create uh, the best platform uh, in where, where in, in which the various problems that people are facing in the communities will reach mm -hmm. the, uh, the ideal stakeholders, like maybe the government officials, mm -hmm. the, the, the women reps and all that, yeah, depending on the main problem that the community is facing. Okay. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you have done when, uh, you know, as a community development worker standing in the gap for communities, what problems have you aired out to the stakeholders and what would you say has been done as a result? Okay. Uh, basically, as, as Bilha, mm -hmm. uh, I am a community development worker. I'm also a menstrual health and uh, hygiene uh, champion within the rural parts of Kenya, let me say Kenya because it's not only in Narok because currently we are based in Narok mm -hmm. but it's not only like in Narok. We are always flexible to move within the entire county, counties. So uh, majorly what I've done with my initiative as a community development worker, I've, I've tried to stand in the gap in addressing the menstrual health and hygiene management challenges that are being faced in the rural parts of Narok or in the rural parts of Kenya. This means th this is uh, the lack of sanitary towels within those places mm -hmm. and even the lack of information like the knowledge about how they can uh, maintain uh, their hygiene when they are in they are in on their periods. So mm -hmm. I've tried to work with the various uh, local authorities like the, the, the local organizations and even the local teachers We've worked with teachers, we've worked with uh, different caregivers within the orphanages. So those are the main people that at least have, have aired out those problems. And together we've uh, tried to work uh, towards mm -hmm. at least achieving that, that safe space where they can at least come to us. We can conduct the trainings, we can get to hear their problems, not only the, the, the menstrual problems but general pro problems okay yeah so you've said that some of the problems that are faced in rural Kenya especially in Narok where you've worked is that mm -hmm. they lack sanitary towels and uh, the lack of information on how to handle themselves right yeah yeah so you have done trainings on the in this regard mm -hmm. to to the ladies and the women is this just the teenagers, is there a specific age group of, uh, you know, girls that are going through this or is it the whole community? Okay, at first uh, we mostly measure with a certain age group because as much as we want to help the entire community, mm -hmm. you also have to have a specific audience or a specific uh, target. So for, for me and my initiative, we deal with adolescent girls and youths in general. Youths meaning even the women, like the young teenage mothers, are also mm -hmm. inclu included in that program. 
Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, what what change has been registered so far? What improvement has been registered since you started uh, the initiative there? Okay, the, the first uh, improvement that I can say is that at least this, the group that I'm working with now can uh, have frequent access to sanitary towels. And uh, they also have enough information, at least mm -hmm. for now, they have enough information regarding their menstrual uh, hygiene management practices that they need to include. Mm -hmm. uh, so at least we've, we've, we've been able to take that information to those extremely rural areas. They had to reach communities in specific. So at least there is that adoption. It's hard because uh, they are still resilient. Like, like they, they, they didn't imagine that such information were, were even existing in the first place. Mm -hmm. They were still uh, deeply rooted into their cultures. So uh, there were certain things that they, they knew were the best things to use during that moment. Maybe things like uh, the Maasai Shuka. But mm -hmm. with the time, one, uh, when we started the training, as we started the training, at least they now tried to adapt the various information. Now they tried to shift their mm -hmm. mindset towards at least using the disposable sanitary towels. Because uh, within the areas that we work with, there, there, there is no water. There is no water. Water is hardly like uh, accessible. So uh, it was kind of hard in the beginning to try to bring them on board in terms of that, try to make them shift their mindset to, towards what they've been used, used to. to. Yeah, mm -hmm. but at least for now, I can say the one, because they are the, the places that we work with, there are no shops and uh, uh, there are no like good roads. It's still extremely interior so these guys uh the especially the women and the uh, girls they didn't have that access full access to sanitary towels but uh, i'm good we've been able to stand in the gap and we've been supplying them with those sanitary towels and mm -hmm. we've, been, we've also been giving that information and gradually they are checking it so Okay. Yeah. So now, what would you say w was the hindrance to the you know, the the culture to the lack of of information on how to, you know, use the sanitary towels? You you said that uh, one of it was using the Maasai sugar during yeah. their periods. So what would happen during this time? Take us through that journey. What would happen to them during this time, and why is this now better for their lives? Okay. Before I think. With the rate also of illiteracy in that place, because majority of the women and girls didn't get the opportunity to like go to school, mm -hmm. so uh, they didn't. They don't have that knowledge. They don't have that know-how of how to even. Uh, we, they don't even have that uh, know-how of things like sanitary disposable sanitary towels. Those are things that are new to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think also uh, the main thing that made them to be deeply rooted into their culture is because of maybe the stigma. They didn't like, they, they still don't openly talk about menstruation. Menstruation is just like sex topics. Mm -hmm. It's something that is, is, uh, is still uh, laid uh, under the carpet for them. So uh, certain things needed someone who maybe um, will boldly tell them about certain those things. So uh, for them, they, they, they were still using the Maasai, maybe shukas or other, other things, maybe just taking uh, the shuka and tying around their waist to prevent menstruation because that one was the main thing that they could afford at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they, okay, they have markets which are like very far, like very many kilometers from the, where they live, but they only get the chance to uh, go to this market like once, mm -hmm. once a week, which is always on Wednesdays. And as we know, every family always have a certain budget within yeah. a certain time, time frame. So you get that, uh, and it's also that majority of these women or, or girls are not given the opportunity to go to the market, even during those market days, because they are meant to stay at home, look after the cattle, and uh, take care of the home homestead in general. Mm -hmm. So you find that majority of the men were the people who were 
going to the market. market. And it's also shameful to like tell your husband to go, go and buy yeah, me go a and, sanitary yeah. towel. It's something even he, he himself he doesn't know mm. about. So you find that there is certain homesteads that have even like even seven girls and uh, plus the mom so they are eight and they are all maybe menstru menstruating because menstruation is not something that is unavoidable once you reach a certain age you reach uh, adolescent you have to go through it so you find that these ones are the things that not getting that that space mm -hmm. that safe space to at least air out their grievances to to their husband or to 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 the people who are in charge even the local authorities who are there so okay. those ones are the main challenges mm -hmm. yeah. and so d does it prevent the young girls from going to school when they're going through their menstruation yeah it does stephanie because once uh, we find that girls are on their periods mm -hmm. And you find that even the school setup itself is not that safe. It's not a safe space where they can trust. Like there is that stigma mm -hmm. within the schools. You find that they are even hard. It is, it is even hard for them not only to go to school but also to participate in school activities because one you you are using now maybe that cloth, and as we know that menstruation there are those people who like experience it differently there are those who like have it uh, heavy and then there the, the are those who have it like lightly mm -hmm. but uh any in any uh way the bottom line remains that you have to use like healthy materials like the disposable sanitary towels so when you are using something like a cloth at the at even within the 30 minutes frame you have to experience leakages mm -hmm. so those things are the things that were making them not to like attend school and the percentage of girls or women who are not mm -hmm. uh, attending school within those such setups is very high okay yeah it's very high so now with the training and the mentorship that uh, you are undertaking or you have undertaken uh, mm -hmm. in those areas has it helped uh, do you even speak to them uh, to the men in the community because now you've said they're the ones who go to the market on wednesdays and uh, their family the the women uh, yeah. and children are afraid to send them uh, sanitary towels so have you talked to them as well? you're also just creating the awareness around menstrual hygiene yeah i've uh, I We've actually, it's an it's a inclusive thing because uh, in order to achieve safe uh, community menstruation or a good quality of like awareness, you have to mm -hmm. incorporate even the men. And the men's role in community uh, menstruation is very vital. So uh, the main thing that we've been doing and I've seen, uh, we've seen actually the results. At the beginning it was hard, ex especially for the, for the, the men. Mm -hmm. to actually come to those trainings because they wanted to to see the main main reason why they they need to attend it they mm. have their various things to do they have so many they can give you a list of so you needed things. to give them a good yeah, reason yeah you had you had to give them a good reason mm -hmm. but uh, i'm 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 glad uh, that at least there are women mm -hmm. who always attend those trainings gradually talked to them and they also started seeing the the change mm -hmm. at least they could uh, take the sanitary towels home they could tell them about the things that they've at least gotten mm -hmm. during the training so gradually they they at least started to accept coming to the uh, coming to to the trainings but that one is different in various communities because there are communities that we go especially in churches where men take the forefront in even calling their girls come come to, let's come go. And, yeah let's, let's mm -hmm. go go and they actually en uh, encourage them to come mm -hmm. because we we have now you have uh, someone who is almost your age so you will be able to open up they uh, the person will be able to talk to you in more in deeper uh, in depth about various things that themselves they can't like talk with their girls mm -hmm. or their women so they always tell them just go they, they they even if they don't come to the trainings but they are the people who are always like encouraging them ensure you go 
to those trainings. And for those who are always uh, coming to the trainings, after we've done the trainings and we are distributing the sanitary towels, they are always telling them, uh, don't actually shy away. Like you get, we give them the sanitary towels and they are, they are the first people to like hide them or they hide them mm. in their bags and all. The men always tell them, no, you just stand there, take a good pic, check your time. Mm. Yeah, hold that thing with like courage, be bold. Yeah. Be bold about yeah, it. Yeah, it's not something to be shameful about nowadays. Would you say this is key to actually, uh, you know, the education being embraced in the communities, men taking up uh, the lead, you know, to empower their women? Yeah, it gives uh, the, the women the confidence they deserve mm -hmm. in maybe uh, seeing that, in normalizing this menstruation thing. Because once they get the go ahead, they get the support, they always know that at least the men have their back. Okay. So they get even the courage to ask even more questions on how they can, they can better themselves in terms of uh, what else can they do? How can they work within the community to at least do something that will help the girls? So they, you find that they, they, they sit down and they, they discuss and they, like, they are like, okay, we need you more regularly mm -hmm. to come and speak to our girls because the main thing is that they lack information, they lack a role model within these setups and that's why maybe they, they, can, they even get to mess maybe they get pregnant and get out of school mm -hmm. because the parents they are can't they are not they have they've not reached that level of openly discussing such issues with their teenage mm -hmm. yeah okay and now the issue of supply because this is in the rural setup and mm -hmm. i believe not everyone can afford the sanitary towels i speak of a family that has seven girls yeah. and uh, they have to buy it and i know that you also do the supplying mm -hmm. so do you do it regularly or how are they uh, able to keep up with the num with sanitary towels every month for the whole family for the seven ladies in the home okay that's a good question first Mm -hmm. I'm not only like dealing with the rural, the hard to reach communities because Narok is big and we can't only put our perception that it's only the rural people who cannot afford the sanitary products. Mm -hmm. Even there, within the town setup, we have uh, people who maybe live in slums or nowadays because of the uh, hard economic times, uh, Stephanie will find that even people who are in town, even the middle middle mm -hmm. age uh, people can't even afford the sanitary towel. It's, it's not a priority to them because now someone will tell you that, okay, I have to buy unga. Unga, unga ime panda, and that one is what my priority is. It's not in such mm -hmm. such uh, such uh, uh, products. But so to them, that this is not a priority. Yeah, it's, it's not to them, necessity. Yeah, it's not a priority. But to answer your question, mm -hmm. the the most interior places that uh, uh, I'm always going, I've, I've told you that the the roads there are not even like we developed. yeah they are not developed those people are are still in a in a in a state where you wonder is are they still in kenya like are they still part of us mm -hmm. they are in their own world and surprisingly they have their leaders not even like the local they they are uh they have their leaders but I don't know actually what their leaders do are doing in in terms of their situation. So uh, one, it's always hard. I don't like give them regularly that often, but I always ensure that once I visit the the, the, the communities because we use motorbikes, uh, affording a taxi to to that place, you will have to it is costly mm -hmm. so we always like use motorbike because in certain in such areas the only things that uh, can be uh, easily accessed mm -hmm. is motorbikes they'll take you up to where you have you you want to go so the main thing that we always do is that when once we plan our visit we always ensure that we give them maybe the sanitary towels for like three months that will at least sustain push them, them, yeah, sustain them for that three months before at least we can embark on our journey to go and see them. But, but uh, we always ensure that we are in uh, um, 
continuous communication with the women leaders who are always in charge of those groups. Okay. Yeah, but uh, we can't say at this moment we are not in a position to regularly visit mm -hmm. them because we also have uh, different other, other places that we always work with within the town setup. Mm -hmm. We have other orphanages, we have other schools that we always visit. And even outside Narok, we have other schools that look up to us. So in these other areas, you also do the supplying once the training is done? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do the training and then after the training, we, we engage maybe in different talks whereby the men go with the, the people who are the, the volunteer men that we always have. Mm -hmm. And then the girls and uh, the women remain with the girls so that we can have at least a girl talk. Then they can also have their own boys okay. talk. Yeah. So where do you get the funding? Okay, the funding for now it's uh, it's based on in kind in kind uh, donations mm. from friends from family members. That's how at least we get to sustain it. That's why I told you uh, previously that uh, for now I'm not in a position to uh, regularly visit these communities. Mm -hmm. Regularly promise them that every month you will always like see sanitary cam towels coming to your mm -hmm. place. But I always prioritize. Mm -hmm. certain areas like they they had to reach places okay. so uh, i always try my best once we get the the donations from friends from family members and from the well-wishers we organize for the training and then we go with the sanitary towels and it's not the only it's not only the sanitary towels because uh menstrual health hygiene management requires other complements, not just sanitary towels. So we have the, the, the soaps and then you have also to get something for the men because you won't uh, put them in a, in a room to do the training and then after that you just like let, let them, them go, go and then they, they see the girls who like being given the sanitary towels, they are always like, what about us? So what are the men given? What about that? You have to at least get something for them. Even if it's just the inner wares or maybe mm -hmm. something like a vest or even books or even pens. Something that will also motivate them. Mm -hmm. Something that will make them to at least continue with this journey together with you guys. Okay. Yeah. So that it's teamwork. Now, yeah. and now you know, being a community development worker, you said mm -hmm. you are the bridge. You stand in the gap yeah. connecting uh, the right stakeholders with the community now because uh, you can't do it on your own have you tried to engage the authority or the government uh, that the leaders that are there to do something about the situation especially for those that are in the you know outskirts of uh, Narok town okay uh, accessing the main challenge is accessing the, the national maybe we can say national uh, government leaders or officials, but uh, you always have to start somewhere. You don't, like, mm -hmm. if they are not accessible at this point, you have to work with those ones who are available mm -hmm. at the, lo the local places. So uh, the ones that we always work with personally is, uh, one, the volunteers from the, the university, the university students, because they are also part of leaders. They also they'll also facilitate this this goal. They'll also like uh, help you in terms of activities and all that. And even besides them as being the volunteers, we always uh, work with the local organizations. And uh, those ones are the directors and uh, the community um, mm -hmm. uh, education uh, leaders who are also there. And then even the government officials, those that you can easily access, mm -hmm. like maybe the Ministry of Education, you go and get like one uh, woman or one man working there. Mm -hmm. So you ha we've al always worked with the people who we can reach at our, as per now, like mm -hmm. the, the church leaders, the pastors, <coughs> we also include them. Okay, yeah. so what, do you, what, what would you say needs to be done for maybe someone who's watching and would want to assist uh, maybe a government official that uh, is in Narok town or any other town that is there or rural area that need, uh, that should help. So what needs to be done to bring the change to these communities? Okay, uh, for now, with the just ended elections, we've seen uh, mm -hmm. women women getting so like many seats, m both uh, uh, as governors and both as MPs, and we have the women reps. Mm -hmm. So my outcry is just for these leaders, especially the government, 
the, mm -hmm. the national government leaders, they need to know actually what is happening <coughs> on the ground. And uh, because they can't like oftenly be physically present in those places to know what is going on, we are the people who are standing in that gap to air out these issues to them. Yes. So my outcry to uh, the officials is that they need to incorporate us in these policies that they are doing. They need to work hand in hand with us mm -hmm. so that at least we can be their eye on the ground okay. at the grassroots level. Yeah, they need to have more youths engaged in certain in the, in various fields not only in community development because there are so many issues there are so many contemporary issues that need to be addressed within the community uh, level so they need to incorporate us okay yeah so they need to incorporate you work yes. as a team yeah so how did you now back to you how did you get into mm -hmm. community development and uh, this initiative for menstrual health uh hygiene management Okay, mm, that's that's interesting. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. first I've told you, uh, Stephanie, I did community development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a community development graduate from Masaimara University. And then it's something that I'm, I'm trying to put in practice what I learned okay. at the university level. Mm -hmm. But it's also something that I grew up seeing. I'm just extending, I'm just an extension of what my mother has been doing. Okay, yeah, so I, yeah, I grew up in a family where I saw my mother like helping literally like not only the orphans but literally anyone who needed her help at that moment. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, it's also just an extension of what I grew up seeing and then it's also something that I'm always passionate about because mm -hmm. of not only the space that I've found myself in but uh, my life has been full of grace, if I can say, mm -hmm. and I'm always willing to extend that grace Amazing. to any lady or any youth, who, especially the youths who are out there, because you find that majority of us, we, we always want to start, but due to uh, various vulnerabilities, we are not always uh, able to even take a step, because uh, we always think maybe th we are not able to do it or we always just think that okay we let just the idea stay in our mind we don't have to actually go out there and implement it mm -hmm. we've always have this mentality of shortage mentality in our head so that's uh, what personally i started from scratch and i started with barely mm -hmm. nothing so i'm always willing to at least use myself use my experience <laughs> For, as a learning platform to any youth who is out there, who is like, I want to start this, I want to start this, but I don't know how to, mm -hmm. to do it. I don't know which step to take. I don't know which criteria to use. So I'm always there to at least mentor them, to always mm -hmm. listen to them. Because a, a <coughs> lot of youth also, we find that we don't have people who are listening to us. Mm -hmm. Whether they are our parents, whether they are <coughs> our uh, whether there are people who, like we look up to and getting a mentor during the time that you need them is also a problem especially for us youth and that's why for me i've used that uh, <coughs> i've used my platform to bring them in bring them on board let them ask me anything and i'll be willing to to uh, answer in a way that will benefit them and also will benefit will benefit both of us so yeah. you have a passion for the youth. Exactly. Okay, and what yeah. about the women? Why did you choose to help the women, to support the women, to start the initiative that you are going for on, uh, uh, on menstrual hygiene? Okay, one thing, it's, it's one thing to be, okay, it's one thing to be a woman, but mm -hmm. it's one thing also, it's another thing to also be a black lady mm -hmm. trying to uh, get <coughs> into the, the, the corporate space or just trying to uh, be something find your purpose within that time <coughs> so what made me to start actually look uh, at women as my first <coughs> mm -hmm. priority is because one i've had first-hand challenges uh -huh. so uh during the uh, okay i grew up in kisumu but i've always been in narok 
after after even graduation I, I found myself just remaining in Narok as work and all that. But you find that majority of the time you go through certain things that you need someone maybe to open up to, but you 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 don't get you don't get that person at that particular time that you are experiencing that challenge. So uh, it's been hard. You find that you, you, you try to solve things personally. <coughs> you try to solve things individually. You try to make certain decisions as, as an individual. Uh, but when you, you could get that opportunity to at least uh, air them out to, with your parents or with anyone, at least your, your guardian, it will be, you could make a better decision that will help you. So that's why I'm always using myself to help these ladies because we ladies go uh, through uh, so much vulnerabilities mm. so uh, it's it's when when someone like me stands in the gap they'll be able to at least open up okay. through what they are facing and we work towards getting the solution together okay. yeah as we come to a close on this particular conversation yeah. what gives you the satisfaction at the end of the day when you go to sleep uh, what gives me the satisfaction is the impact mm -hmm. that um, I'm, I'm using my platform to, to achieve because I'm always uh, more tied on or more attached to service. My main, main theme is always service, service to, uh, to, to uh, my fellow uh, girls, service to my family, fa service to even the larger community. So what gives me satisfaction is that at least at the beginning I was afraid but I did it anyway. I took that step. You, you started trembling but you started anyway. Yes, I started anyway. Okay. So that is always what gives me the, the, the even the motivation to move on. Once you, you, you find yourself trying to like uh, reaching in a point where you want to give up, you just find, you, you look at the why you are why why did you start at the end of the day and then you just find yourself going on your why will steer ahead you towards the the, the end goal your why will yeah. steer ahead you towards the end goal amazing yes. and finally mm -hmm. finally what change do you want to see in our communities as a community development worker and maybe just uh, your last piece of mm -hmm. advice or your uh, yeah something that you want to close with mm -hmm. that will be your camera Okay, uh, thank you so much. Mm. Uh, what I want to see more youths being engaged. I want mm. to see more youths coming out boldly to uh, use their voice in various, in different uh, perceptions, whether you are in community development, whether you are in uh, business, whether you are in uh, other, other, any field that you are in, just use your voice to get to where you want to, to go. And uh, to all youths also out there, just know that what you are seeking is already seeking you. So it's, it will just be a matter of what are you willing to, to do in order to get to that, that uh, place. So uh, that's my main advice to them. Amazing. Just start, yeah, just start. Just take that one, one, one step of faith mm -hmm. and everything will be. Okay. Everything will be okay. Where yeah. can people find you on your social media handles in case someone wants to reach you? Okay, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, uh, mm -hmm. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on, uh, oh, not sweet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'm on Facebook and, uh, and I'm on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. I'm also on WhatsApp and my number, I think. Uh, What's your handle? What's the name they can get you on? Yeah, your, all at Bill Hajoy. Bilha Joy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Bilha, mm -hmm. for coming on board and sharing your story and inspiring someone out there who's just, you know, was wondering, who has an idea rather and mm -hmm. has had doubts maybe on how to start mm -hmm. and just for being a woman out there doing great things with what you have. We celebrate you today. Thank you so much. Welcome. And I'm really glad to be uh, on this platform, the number one youth station. Yes. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Stephanie, for having me.
Welcome. Yeah. So that has been Bill Hart Joy, uh, a warrior who's a community development worker and also a champion for menstrual hygiene management. And sh as she has been taking us through her journey, what I have taken from this is start. Even if you're trembling, if you're shaking, just start anyway. And if you're a youth, use your voice to bring a change to the world. Just a little impact will go a long way. This has been Strength of a Woman. We now uh, take a short break and then Kalami Val will be back with WCW.